Hello and welcome. Welcome to a very special edition of CPR Clubhouse Live. My name is CPR Jose Ortiz. I'm your host. Uh, I'm being joined by my favorite people in the world, uh, a great panel. Uh, we have the one and only Tim Spinning Shore. You can see them. You can see him there. Um, also joining us, uh, the DJ uh, that rocks the 40 minute mix is weekly, CPR's Clubhouse, uh, DJ Cliff Potts, AKA the Vile Assassin. And of course, um, our uh, dust of freestyle. We have Sean Rodriguez with us. <laughs> They're wrong way. Get to the wrong way. You see them that can put up with us because she has practiced with her husband. <laughs> You're so festive over there. It looks great. Really yeah, beautiful. man, I try. I try. Look at that beautiful tree. <laughs> Thank nice, you. Nice, nice crown. So, um, we're going to discuss the year review 2021. Um, and so we want to discuss our top 10 favorite songs of the year. Um, everyone has their individual list. Um, I'm not sure how you guys think about 2021, but 2021 started really slow. And then after the mid-year is when people started churning out these records. Um, I also thought that 2021 was not as good as 2020, but it was starting to get there at the later part of the year. Want to get your um, want to get your feedback on that, uh, Cliff? Yeah, agreed. Um, that's why I think for my list, some of the songs that came out later this year may normally not make my list because I would count them into twenty twenty two, right? But because of the selection this year, um, or lack of in the beginning of the year, um, my list has some of the the newer songs that might not normally make it. What about you, Tim? Danger, Shomer? Yeah, you know what, I, I gotta tell you, I think that the music this year has been was fantastic, and I, like you said, I think it was getting a lot better. There were so many powerhouses this year, too, and it's only gonna get better for 2022. Yeah, Cheryl, what do you think uh, about 2021? I, I agree, it, it was a little slow going, and, and I was playing a lot of the same stuff for quite a while, uh, but then it just kind of like, we got slammed with some really good stuff, and were to come of more, like Tim said, in 2022, so it's it's kind of exciting. Yeah, it is exciting, and um, what I wanted to do is, again, uh, we've done this, this is our second time doing this together, and I, I like to learn from uh, my, my panel here on what they thought was the top 10 uh, freestyle songs of 2021. So we're going to get going right now with the list uh, <laughs> with number 10. Uh, I'm going to go to the one and only Tim Spinning Schober. Who was your number 10 for 2021? For number 10, I think I'm going to say um, Marilyn Torres in exchange for what? Nice. Very, very good choice. Um, yeah, I think I love that, that um, you can't go wrong with that song. Yeah, you can't. You really can't. I'm just gonna make it over here. Okay, yep. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Sure, it was a great song, yeah. and and uh, not for nothing. I mean, I think uh, you know she's uh, she's she's working very hard, and I know uh, she's got a couple under her uh, under her belt. And I'm sure that's not gonna be the last song we hear from her. Yeah, her brand new song "Born" uh, was released a few weeks ago. Um, you know, it's something that um, is different than all the other songs that were offered in 2021, where you know she really goes deep into the old school and uh pulls out this um this 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 retro song that that seems like a, a old school micmac uh metropolitan record um and and it's just uh modernized to 2021 but i, I enjoyed uh torn uh in exchange for what is probably you know top tier uh freestyle um if you ever heard of your freestyle especially the throwback uh versions that her husband DJ Berkman uh, produces. Awesome. Cheryl, who do you have for your number 10? Um, all right. So I just want to say, right, that uh, Rudy Fausto, I have to give him the biggest shout out in the world because he didn't make my top 10. He didn't. But if I could have like an extra or like an 11, he would be it. But having said that, because I had the song Walking Away, it blew me away. Absolutely amazing, lyrically everything. I loved it, but I'm giving my number ten spot to Nelson Arego with "Broken." Wow. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, Nelson Arego has had a a stellar year uh, for 2021. He released three different songs. Uh, we weren't meant to be broken. 
most recently, um, he released a brand new song on the Rego. He chopped off the, the <laughs> first name, uh, even if it's forever. Um, so that's a great choice for number 10. Uh, Rego is putting out videos. Rego is, uh, you know, uh, going to do a remake to John Cicada's Just Another Day. He, he provided that record for free to many of his fans. And now I visit that in 2022 uh, in dance version. So it's going to be a great, um, it's going to be a great, uh, 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 you know, uh, remake for 2022. But you using Broken as your first song for 2021 was great. Uh, Cliff Potts, I'm, I'm interested in your list too as well. What do you got for number 10? Who's holding you now, Monet? <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Nice. Um, I, I would like to say that there was not a more forgotten song in a week than Monet's "Who's Holding You Now," and I'm not I'm not sure why, because Monet, um, as many of you may know, is the person responsible for me uh, being obsessed with freestyle. Um, I heard um, "Come On to Me," and it just became uh, the quint the quintessential song that got me into this genre. So. When she returned in 2021 with Who's Holding You Now, uh, with George Anthony doing background something like Jimmy Tunnel, I thought it was going to be a song that everyone would jump on. Yeah. And, and what I heard was selective people jumping on it, and then the fans themselves um, forgetting about the song after a week. They moved on really fast. Yeah. Yeah. This guy I wonder why that was. I mean, uh, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead, Cheryl. No, no, please. I, that's all I was saying. I, I, I agree. That's you're absolutely right. And and having you describe it that way, you're absolutely right. That's exactly kind of what happened. I kind of feel like it, it didn't really have a real beginning, and it didn't really have an end. It kind of, it kind of nobody said, "Bam, here's the release date," and mm -hmm. let's all, you know, like sometimes, you know, let's open the door and off to the races we go, and then yeah. you know, let it have a life. And I, I feel like this song didn't really have a life. And uh, yeah. that I'm just going to jump ahead and say that was my number nine, my nine uh, selection too. So that, I, I really believe in that record. I thought it was a great record. The production with the with the Yaz thing, the bomb, really cool. And, and if I yeah. may, let me go back to Rudy real quick. You're right. Rudy is a is a talent to be reckoned with. Uh, the reason I don't play that song very much is because, first of all, it depressed. The, it really made me sad, <laughs> and it was really long. And uh, that's the little two things. Mostly, it was really sad. It I was found myself sad. going, oh man. You know, I'm trying to get the party started and I'm walking away, you know, <laughs> that's not, I'm right. taking anything away from Rudy or the song. I'm just, you know, for the party. That's a great point. That's great all point. I'm saying about the Rudy song. And I love Rudy. Rudy's my well, guy. So, okay. Spoiler alert. Uh, my number 10 song is Rudy Fausto walking away. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the, the, the three parts of the song <laughs> is what got it to number 10. The story. Yeah. Where yeah. he, you know, in the beginning, he doesn't want the responsibility to be a father, and he walks away from his family. The second part is being rejected when he attempted to come back, and then the third part is his own son walking away, um, doing the same thing that he did uh, before he was born. And I thought it was a brilliant uh, song, a brilliant writing, and I had to include it in my top ten just for that. It is a depressing song. It is one. It is. It is totally freestyle, right? Yeah, uh, but but in a way, <laughs> but, but in a way where you're thinking about uh, current events, you know, there's a lot of missing fathers out there, and people that run away from responsibility, and they tapped into that. Um, so he gets my number ten. Um, we we all started with bangers here, um, and we all have great reasons. Um, so I had the same um, thought, you know, do I put in exchange for what, or do I put Rudy Foster walking away? So I had to choose between both, and I chose uh, Rudy's walking away. But it wasn't an easy decision. Everybody satisfied with the number 10s? Yes. Yes. All right, so Cheryl Rodriguez, who was number nine on your list? Monet, who's holding you now? Okay. Absolutely perfect. Um, it's not the only time that we're going to hear about Monet. No. Um, uh, I I see Hopefully. That, yeah. I see that Shomer and Rodriguez chose uh, Monet for their uh, number nine spot. Um, Cliff Potts, I'm interested in hearing who you chose for number nine. Um, you should know already. <laughs> We're on a roll. Uh -huh. It's Rudy Fausto. Yay! All right. So, so we're not too far off on, on our picks when it comes to that. And, and it's funny because you just said the dilemma that I went through. It was right. really 
um, Marilyn Torres in exchange for what or Rudy Fausto in that in that number nine spot. And right. I just enjoyed back to Tim saying it, it is sad, but I enjoyed the story. It was yeah. one of the few songs this year that you can actually listen to mm-hmm. and get a whole story from right. that was totally different than everything else. Yeah, and, and that it's it's great writing. And it's a type of writing that, that paints pictures in your head. And that's what you want out of your freestyle, for people to paint pictures. You don't want that lying, dying, and crying stuff that was typical back in 88. I mean, we're in 2021. We're removed about almost 30 years. So I want to make sure that we have good storylines in our music. So big shout out going out to these folks. Um, for me, number nine was uh, a song that, is not supposed to be freestyle, but is inspired by freestyle. So it is freestyle, um, and that is Anthony Ramos and Love and Lies. Um, the the man who um, is starring in In the Heights, um, he got uh, the main role. Uh, also on HBO's, uh, I'm sorry, not HBO's, but Netflix's. She's got to have it. Also on Stars, um, just a a great um, actor, but he is also a singer. And he went publicly this year to say that his song Love and Lies, which really sounds like a freestyle song, is homage and inspiration from TKA's Louder Than Love. And and what I what I feel that our community did this year is that they ignored that. And that was so such a poignant hmm. part of our music this year that they ignored the fact that this mainstream actor and this mainstream singer did a freestyle song that was inspired by TKA's Louder Than Love, and I thought that was brilliant. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I'll have to go back and re-listen to that. Should be taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, we're going to start with DJ Cliff Potts. Who did you have for your number eight? We weren't meant to be. Rego. Nice. So the man that chopped his first name off is, is getting <laughs> a lot of votes this year. So Rego and uh, We Weren't Meant to Be. Uh, made it to the, to that spot. Um, didn't make my list um, because I thought that the other songs that I have here uh, were my favorites. Uh, but uh, I'm interested to hear what Cheryl has on her list. Number eight, I have uh, Mia Inside Out. Yes, what a what a great year for Mia. Um, the community, the community, um, you know, can't can't build people up and then destroy them at the same time. <laughs> right. But but we, we have we have that every year. We have we pick an artist that we we want to play, and everybody gets together to play. And then by the end of the year, there's an issue with that artist. But we can't be hypocrites at the end of the year and say that uh, you know Mia Inside Out is not a good song. And number yeah. two, that everyone didn't play the crap out of it. Um, it's part of my list. I, I haven't gotten to it yet, but uh, it was the number one song for the half year. For the first part of the year, all you heard was everyone whether it be an iRadio DJ, FM DJ, Mix DJ, they were all playing this song. So that's a great choice. Shomer, who do you have? For number eight, um, I, I was I was almost didn't want to, well, I'm just going to say, I, I, stop in the name of love, our girl uh, Lizette Melendez. Yes, um, what, what, a, what a hustler that woman is, right? She is a constant hustler. Um, I saw you posted uh, one of her songs uh, recently. Yeah, uh, don't ever say. Don't ever say. It. It's a song that I play at the end of my show all the time, and and uh, it's just a song that I got ignored. I think when it first came out. Yeah, and I saw what a brilliant song. And now you can yes. sing along. The the production was so unique for a freestyle song. But, but what I will it. say is, back then, uh, the first generation and second generation of the old school artists didn't want to perform new freestyle music. And the the thing about Lisa Melendez is that. She had the fortitude and the foresight to perform these new songs. So I always give her credit for always being the person that records a new freestyle song. And whether you like it or not, good, bad, or indifferent in your view, she's going to perform it. And and that's what you want from a freestyle artist. So um, you can't go wrong with Lisette Melendez. Right. Not to mention, every time she gets on stage, she looks like a million bucks. Like yeah. she just pulls it together, and it doesn't matter. You know, like she she rocks, man. She's totally yeah. Black. Yeah. And so, um, my number eight is um, someone that we forgot during our mid year countdown. 
uh, and that was the Princess of Style, Cynthia Figueroa. And oh. that is, now that you're gone. Great now, song. there are some times that songs, <laughs> songs, songs are released like at certain parts of the year where there's this, there's, there's this pocket where people listen to it and forget, like it happened to Monet. Um, and it could have happened to Cynthia Figueroa uh, if it wasn't for the fact that we started promoting the song in 2020. But um, we can't forget it for the year end countdown for 2021 because, you know, she's she is who she is and the fans love her here in New England. So she earned that spot. It's well produced, greatly sung. Um, there's nothing bad you can say about the song. And exactly. She has to be part of the show. Yes, she's great. This countdown. So that everybody submit their number eight spot. Yeah. All right. All right. So number seven, I will start with number seven. Um, everyone discussed this song already, but for me, number seven is Monet's Who's Holding You Now. Uh -huh. uh, my number seven. Now, there's something about the, uh, remakes, right, that people um, don't like. But there's something about this remake, this redone song, uh, so many years later, that just makes it perfect. And I could only, I could only compare it to Willie Valentine's One True Love Affair. The original had background vocals by Debbie Cole. And so you're thinking like, there is no way that he could remake the song and make it better. 2014, Willie Valentine remakes One True Love Affair with his wife, Cynthia Figueroa. And not only, in my opinion, does she match the original, but she surpasses it. And so to me, there's not a better background singer in all of freestyle than Jimmy Tunnel. And when I when I found out that Monet was gonna do Who's Holding You Now, a song that she released, you know, many years ago, and now she was gonna have not Jimmy Tunnel, but George Anthony Tunnel uh, <laughs> the backgrounds. And I'm thinking, man, this this could be disastrous. And man, was I wrong. Um, you know, like I can't say that uh, George Anthony surpassed Jimmy Tunnel because that would be blasphemy. <laughs> he, he matched it to the point where you're like, George Anthony Tunnel should be his name, the Gap. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's why it gets my number seven spot. What a great background and what a great comeback by Monet. Yeah, uh, absolutely. That no one should ever ignore. And then the production by uh, Julio Mena. The vocals recorded by Jay Allums, like what a combination, and it was just a perfect blend. And I, I was just hoping that for more for this song for twenty uh, twenty one. I'm with you there. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go back and revisit that song. I feel like it got lost in the shuffle, but that really, uh, yeah. every time I got played, it was always a, a powerhouse. Nicky, you know, you know they say half the battle when you release a song is timing and yeah now yeah you either get it or you don't and this one kind of yeah i get so lost in the shuffle that is that is the sad part of our music and we, you know we'll discuss this when we discuss the year and countdown because everyone's like this song has to be number one because you know people want to burn through stuff really fast right and that's what happened with monet um that's what may have happened with with um the extra promotion for Cynthia Figueroa's Now That You're Gone, Anthony Ramos's Love and Lies. If it wasn't for for shows like Shomer's or mine, uh, where I have DJ Cliff Pods doing mixes for me, some of these songs wouldn't be promoted as, as it should be. Um, and a lot of the internet DJs, right, they like to play the people that they become friends with instead of be, um, becoming impartial, listening to everything, and then playing the top quality stuff um, like, like Shomer and I do. Um, and I'm, I'm not speaking for Shomer. I'm just making that, that comment. Um, Shomer can step in at any time and say whatever you like. <laughs> it's, because, pretty, it's pretty right on. Thank because you. he's Shomer. You know what I mean? <laughs> Thank uh, you. Yeah. But, you know, trying to make everybody happy, you end up making nobody happy. And I feel like you got to be sure <laughs> yourself sometimes and say, hey, man, you know. That's, anyway, right. that's all I'm going to say on that subject. I don't want to step on any toes. No, no. And, that, and that's, yeah. the, that's, the, that's the difference. Sometimes people don't understand, like you're Shomer, there's a certain level that you go to, but you can't pass because you're Shomer, you have a responsibility. Right, uh, plus, I mean, me plus, I mean, uh, uh, realistically, I'm doing a Facebook show, but 
you know, it, I think I feel like it speaks for the genre. I mean, I, th I feel like I have absolutely we have a little something. So when I look at the little picture, I think, well, that's dude's my friend, and I want to make sure that you mm -hmm. know he still likes me and all that stuff, and I want to make you know, but. And then I see those same people not sharing it up for me or doing yeah. anything. How are you helping me, man? You, you yeah. know, same thing with me. You know, I have the podcast. And, or girl. Um, mm -hmm. I, it's funny. I have a podcast and, and many people play it. But the artists that I feature, most of them don't, right? And I know that because I get a report, right? But um, it's funny, though, when I put the list up for the top 40 freestyle songs of 2021, I got inboxes like six in a row. Like, oh, you forgot my sh my song. <laughs> um, you know, I should be higher up. <laughs> this person's cheating on the poll, stuff like that. You know, it just it's just crazy to me. But let's get back to the top ten of twenty twenty one. Um, so my number seven is Monet, who's holding you now. Uh, oh, Tim Spinning Showman, who do you have for number seven? Uh, this record probably could have been up higher if it wasn't for uh, actually. Uh, it's such a great song. Uh, percussion by uh, Bashiri Johnson, who did the percussion on Naomi. Um, please don't go. Uh, just a step below me, C Bank. Nice. I had to rec I had to make a, a, a debut on my chart because I mean I did a mix on it, but even before that I was playing the um, playing playing a lot. Uh, Carlos Barrios, you know production C Bank. Bada bing, bada boom. We love C Bank. Right. Love the production. And happy to be a part of the, the remixes too. Um, I love the Latin percussion at the beginning. Um, yeah. I think that that's what makes the song. Um, and I think that when C Bank sings anything, she can sing the Yellow Pages if they still distributed it. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we may have to download the app, but um, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's a it's a thing where C Bank has always been the most consistent in my book, and also like you know one of the women who kept this genre going when people weren't recording new freestyle. Um, so she needs to get her due. And could she be cooler? I mean, she's the coolest. Yeah, right? She's so nice. Mm -hmm. we love, uh, we love her. I have so many nice things to say about C-Bank, but I'll leave it right there because we got to continue on with number right. seven. Cool. Uh, Cliff Potts, who do you have? So reminding back to where I started the show to say some songs that normally come out towards the end of the year might not be on my list, but 2021 is it is a whole different year. Um, and my one through six slots were pretty much taken. Um, so my number seven is Are You Ready for Love by Cynthia? Good. Nice. Talking yeah. about Nelson Rigo in the background and George Anthony again in the background vocals. Yep. Yeah. And the video is not that bad. You got you also have KL in the background and, and A B from actual. Um, so it's a, it's a star-studded song that still has legs. Yeah. So it, didn't, it, make, it yeah. didn't make it didn't make my list for this year. But what people need to understand, right, is the fact that our countdown is from November to November because in December is all about tallying the points mm -hmm. and allowing the the listeners to put in their their lists. But also, we can't cut the legs off a song because it's the end of the year. We got to let that ride. Right. for a few months more because there are remixes coming uh christmas day for cynthia um Ooh, right. and and um there are there are um more spins that we need to give this record so it, it's gonna make the top 20 or even top 40 of 2021 and it's making our personal list as well but it won't be as high as you think because it's still a new song that's only a few weeks old and it has legs so talk about somebody who's yeah. Talk about somebody who's really working hard too. Boy, she she's been working hard since she was seventeen. Yeah, you know she she doesn't stop. You know she another one work. that when she gets on stage is like whoa, like you know the whole get up, the whole thing. Like she totally sells the act, and that's I think half the reason why we love her. Like she's incredible, and she couldn't be nicer too. And she doesn't I have know. to be. She's so good. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, there, there's a. Uh, this is a genre of king and queens, right? Because we're always having that <laughs> argument about yeah. who's a king, who's a queen. There is no argument on who is the dream girl. Right. You got at it. At all. There's only one dream girl, Cynthia. Period. Done. You know what I mean? Um, and so, you know, we have to appreciate what we have when it comes to her. And that poster, 
Bernardo Sierra in that poster. My yeah. goodness. <laughs> I can't right. wait to get my poster so <laughs> I can frame it and put it on my wall. This Chasing Amy poster is going down. And <laughs> <is> going wow. Down. <laughs> and you know how I feel about Chasing Amy. Yeah, that's big. <laughs> Cheryl Rodriguez, who's your number seven? My number seven was Brenda K. Star, I Miss You. Yeah. Shomer and Baby Mix. Yeah, thank you. Love that. Let me just say, wow. let me just say that even though it didn't make my list, mm -hmm. that that was a brilliant remix. Yep. Um, that was all Charlie. Most I understand. Same thing, with, same thing with my TKA one from last year. It's all Willie. But <laughs> but the fact that the fact that I like I like your style, Shomer, that where you take whatever <laughs> you want and you put it wherever you want and you just make it yours. I love that. Um, hey, that was Charlie pretty much. I, I came up with the idea to say, hey Charlie, just say. I miss you. <laughs> and then, yeah, the uh, the uh, craft work thing in there, and I mean, we kind of pieced it together. But uh, uh, yeah, Charlie is a genius, truly. That's great. It's I a it's a great pick. Um, it's um, not something that made my my um, my list, but it was right there, twelve maybe. You know what I mean? It's just yeah, it's just good too. stuff. Brenda's very nice. Uh, number uh, number seven, Cliff Potts. No, I gave you that one already. You did. Cynthia. See how I'm not keeping track because I'm talking? <laughs> so did everyone submit their number sevens? Yep. Yes. Okay. Let's continue on with number six. And so I'm going to start number six uh, because I'm going to go with what Cliff Potts stated. Um, this song still has legs. And, and people were um, very judgmental when the song came out. But for me, the video is what did it for me um and and the fact that this man can carry a song from start to finish uh george lamont uh fly groove featuring george lamont i believe in love um it threw a bunch of people out of my my top 10 list for the year mm -hmm. because because he carried the song the song didn't carry him and even though it's a remake um he just made it his own um, I don't remember the original anymore. You know what I mean? And then the video has um, one of my favorite Latin a actresses and uh, a woman who's attached to Andy Panda's uh, old show with Tony Moran, uh, Second Generation. Uh, she's in that <laughs> video. And she's also in Orange is the New Black. She was also in Fear of the Walking Dead. Um, and she's just my favorite uh, actress. Um, and so I, I had to give my number six spot to Fly Groove featuring George Lamont, I Believe in Love, uh, because he's playing a parent role in this one, too. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it was like, cute. Like, it was so cute. I, I was like, oh, that's like, the feeling I got. Freestyle's sex symbol is now playing a <laughs> parent. And they did like a West Side Story type of, yeah. of uh, a video. I just, I loved it. Yeah. Believe me, that didn't change the minds of anybody just because he played a parent. I got news for you. If anything, he was probably more attractive for people. Absolutely. He sold it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So, uh, Tim, what do you have for your number six? You know, this one I, I feel like uh, a lot of people missed. Uh, uh, it's my friend Elisa B. It's called Sunshine. Oh, yeah. And that record uh, was a giant record. I didn't want to pass her up. Um, it's probably one of the happiest records in freestyle this year. Um, that's why I gave it the number six position. Um, Elizabeth B is brilliant. Um, yeah. Yeah. from legendary to slipping through my hands to you know, just all these different songs that she writes. And I feel that she was also one of those artists that she put out something new in 2021, and people played it for a week and they're like, Next, and then Shomer kept on spending it all year, right? But then everybody else forgot about it, yeah. And so, we got to do better, you know. Hopefully, in 2022, we can start a a conversation with djs um that we can start a rotation of some kind where hey we're going to be playing this um this uh song every week um you want to join us in spinning it so we can you know tackle uh, some chicago buzz. and massachusetts and connecticut and new york you know and hopefully better things happen for for the artist right so so we got we got my number six we got shomer's number six uh, Cheryl Rodriguez, who do you have? Cynthia Figueroa. Now that you're there gone. You go. So you sure you don't want to take that one out and put the person that you substituted her with? 
<laughs> Listen, if it was up to me, she'd be number one and never leave number one. She'd stay there forever and ever and ever. She's great. But she gets my number six. Um, so there's only one dream girl, Cynthia. And for me, if you're in New England, there's only one princess of style, and that's Cynthia Figueroa. And that is enough said. Um, I've seen I've seen Cynthia Figueroa do shows with uh the first generation legends and get a better reception than they did. Uh, live and it's not because she has the best vocals um, or or because um, you know she has the best songs because she does but it's it's because she's such a humble loving yeah caring artist right so can you imagine like the sweet tooth tour is Cynthia Figueroa <laughs> the Princess of style and the dream girl, Cynthia, all in one oh. night. I'm telling oh. you, we I'd buy tickets for that. Cavities that night. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. All night. That yeah. is awesome. Cliff Potts, what do you have? Number six, All This Misery, Jay Mazur. Nice. Ooh, nicely played, sir. Nice. And and again, another song that still has legs. Yeah. And, yeah. and that everyone should be playing. There, there shouldn't be any complaints about this song at all. Just listening to the break. You just want to just listen to the yeah. break and put it on the loop. I'm making a note. Yeah, no, I think the the break, uh, Willie did a great job. And I think Jay's vocals in this track sound probably the best that they have sounded. Yes, mm -hmm. of course. I love it. It's CPR's Clubhouse Top 10 uh, Freestyle of 2021. Uh, again, we have uh, Tim Spinning Shomer along with DJ Cliff Potts, the Vinyl Assassin, and also the Duchess Cheryl Rodriguez. Uh, my name is CPR Jose Ortiz. Right now we're gonna go ahead with uh, our personal top five from the top 10 freestyle songs of 2021. Uh, I'm gonna give it to Cheryl Rodriguez for her to share her number five song. Actual, Don't Forsake Me. Nice. Nice. Does anybody else have actual on the same spot? Me. Ooh. James Spinning Shomer got on the same spot already. Number five. So, <laughs> so what made you choose actual at that high position? Um, it was. It's, I mean, in moves, it's a fast groove, so we can you know it, it play it a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, you know. It kind of, I was kind of, wasn't sure what to put my top 10. It would have been either that or the AB, uh, it won't be long. Right. So um, I, I feel mm -hmm. like the actual kind of had, I don't know, now that we're even talking about it, I don't know, maybe I could have went to the AB, but I'm going to stay with what I picked. Um, it's also on my list. It's a little higher, but we'll talk about that in a few. Okay. Um, I, I love, first of all, I, before you go, before you go, I love the fact that uh, K and uh, AB got together to do something like that. Yes, yes. So we're, we're gonna we're gonna elaborate on that um, when I get when I gets on my list. I guess I'm I'm being special, uh, but um, so we'll elaborate on that because uh -huh. I also want to talk about the writer Louis Marte uh, when we get to the to the to the record. Okay. Uh, the production by DJ Merc One, um, and and there's a part of that song, and I guess we'll talk about it now. But in actual, <laughs> but in actual, there's a part there's a part of that song that is written so well, you know. Um, trying to find the words, but you know, you know, it it just a, like he puts it on there, and it just sounds like Louis Marte was writing in the voice of KL of of, of K, and um, to see to see these guys unite for the first time in all these years um, to become actual. Uh, to become uh, a unit again and to put out the song and to allow uh, Louis Marte to submit the song to them, them liking it, and then, then recording it. But then when you hear the vocals, it sounds like Louis Marte wrote the song specifically in the tone for AB and in the tone for K. <laughs> I absolutely agree. And it's just <laughs> perfect. Um yeah, it's perfect. So, so uh, kudos. I it, it appears that um, we may have to give a CPR's unofficial official award to Luis Marte for best writer um, because on the song he talks about you know trying to find the words, can't you know come up with the lines. I love that 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 writing. Um, it's just it's just lovely. Um, so, congratulations, guys. Number five uh, on these lists. 
Um, who do you have, Cliff, for number five? Inside Out, Mia. Oh! So, uh, another song that's on my list, and it'll be coming up soon, and um, it, it, like Mia hit the world by storm in 2021, the freestyle world. Um, and, and no matter how people may feel about her, you know, professionally, it has nothing to do with how hot this song is. You know what I mean? And how everyone was playing this song in 2021. So when when you have, uh, you know, top 40s of 2021, if Mia is not in the, in the upper part of the countdown, then you're lying about the popularity of the song because everybody was playing it. And she's a workhorse too. I mean, and I should say workhorse. She has been working her uh, back pocket area off because uh, she's you know, she's everywhere, all over social right. media too. Yeah, absolutely. So my my number Your five, I, I'm going back a little bit to 2020 for a song that that uh, was like um, a song that had legs and was also a savior for our genre at the beginning of the year. Is the D Mike remix of Mark Milan's "I'm Going Crazy." Now people are like, "What do you mean?" Well, that that <laughs> remix came out at the later part of 2020, and it became a mainstay at the beginning of the year. Um, <coughs> and I don't know, I don't know what it is about the song that I love the most. I don't know if it's D Mike's um, remix or if it's a fact that Mark Milan sounds Mwah! in the song. Jeez, he sounds great, primo yeah. in the song. I just I, I loved it. It. Um, it's just a, a great song that I can listen to over and over again because it starts off slow and it ends with a crescendo. And I love songs like that. That just ends great. Um, probably the uh, the best song on the entire roster of uh, Amazing Records and on their entire catalog of Amazing Records. That's like the, the song um, f to get from that catalog. So well, if, if I, I could show song, you... You buy the D Mike remix of Mark Milan's I'm Going Crazy because... You're not going to regret spending those two dollars. If I could show you my other list, which <laughs> I go back to where if I didn't include Cynthia, my other song was I'm Going Crazy by Mark Milan. He just sounds amazing. Um, and um, I can't say enough good things about it. So. He's a great guy, too. Nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I probably am on his bad list because um, we booked him here in Massachusetts and put him in a rat hotel. <laughs> and what I mean by that is that rats were actually knocking on the door. Really? <laughs> like, hey, let me in. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was uh, it wasn't me. It was it was my partner. I don't want to blame my partner live on camera, but <laughs> my partner's like, oh, let's put him close to the to the venue. So it's like up up the up the you know up the way about a mile is this, this hotel. What we didn't know is that hotel was being used to house people that were homeless. And <laughs> <laughs> So Mark Mark Milan, sorry, so Mark Milan is in the, in the, uh, calling us. He's like, ah, oh, there's people knocking on my door through the window. You know, <laughs> uh, I can I can assure you that he didn't stay there. He, he was he was there for three hours, and then after that, he went to stay with his family in Connecticut. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> I was in Jersey, and I got put up in this. Uh, I'm not going to say by who, but I'll say his name. Ryan Bluth, Ricky Garcia, and we went to. Uh, <laughs> I was in Jersey. Put me in this, the the. The floor was like this. I had to sleep sideways on the bed so I wouldn't roll off, and it was crazy. And uh, when uh, I get picked up, he was like, "Dude, what the hell? What? What is this room?" Anyway, so we stayed there for one day. But anyway, that was my yeah. yeah, yeah. Every time, every time an orange foot on the floor, it would roll down to the yeah, floor. Exactly. <laughs> funny, funny. Anyway, oh man. Uh, so yeah, but uh, so Mark Milan, uh, did everybody already submit the number five? Yep. See. Uh, so my number four, I'll start with my number four. We, we're we going to go back to Mia's Inside Out. Again, it was the number one song for the first half of 2021. Um, so, you know, big shout-outs going out to Jay Allen's who produced it. Uh, big shout-outs to the writer uh, because it just became a mainstay. It just became an anthem. There, there were not so many anthems in 2021. Uh, last year we had like seven. This year we had like a few. And, and some of them came at the later part of the year. Mm -hmm. So we, are, we kept our freestyle uh, uh, mixers uh, ready with the Mia. You know, everybody was playing it. It's part of my intro. Um, it's part of, um, you know, everybody's uh, set. Um, what do you have for number four, Shomer? Uh, for number four for me was Time by Naeja. 
Nice. I know the record that I did a mix on, but but uh, uh, love the song before I did the mix on it. And uh, Willie Valentine produced it, right? Uh, it was, was uh, it it by Jay Allums. Jay Allums produced it. Jay Allums, and it was what recorded you with Willie, the right? mix. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah, Willie yeah, the dub mix, yep. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, uh, I, I can't talk enough about time. That's all I talk about on my timeline. Yeah, <laughs> love the record. Love the song. Uh, well written. I think it's, um, and I hope I don't hurt any of my feelings, but I think this may be Manage, or her, her best song. My favorite song by Nasia. No argument for me. Yeah, yeah great. Fantastic. Uh, who do you have uh, for number four, Cheryl? Seabank. He's just a step below me. Yeah. You you would think that a title like that wouldn't work, right? You, yeah, you would think, right? Not for Seabank. It's crazy. I mean, it, it, the whole song, it, as soon as you say the title, it's like, aha, I know what the song is mm -hmm. going to be about, you know, right up in a nutshell. That's great. Yeah, I, I just I just think that in the beginning, you're like, he's just a step below me. And then you're like listening to it. I'm like, ah, I don't know. And then you hear that conga beat. Mm -hmm. And then you hear, you hear mm -hmm. um, Seabank start singing. And then she just carries you all the way through, and you're no like, "This, world. this yeah. is a, uh, this song is undeniable." You know yeah. what I mean? And what can you do? Is 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 uh, is Seabank? Is Joy May? It's it's Heminis? Is is the woman that has kept this genre going for a while when it comes to new music, from "Promise Me Your Heart" all the way to now? You know, yeah. I can't wait to get my calendar in the mail too. Oh yeah, I gotta get two of those. Yeah, she's so. I mean, she's so cool. Anyway, she's the best. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get one to not ever open it, and then one to hide, so I can <laughs> and put it away. Uh, Cliff Potts, who do you have? Um, don't forsake me, actual. Yeah. Right. Uh, let, you know, we're gonna roll with number three in this one. Actual is number three for me, and again, I, I could only speak highly of the writing by Luis Marte. The production by DJ Merc One, the dub mix by Willie Valentine. At the end of the year, dub mixes became very popular. Mm -hmm. uh, Willie Valentine did an amazing dub mix, not only for Niaja Time, for for actual as well, um, where they have that that introduction, like a pro wrestling introduction in the beginning. Um, as you know, it's inspired by the mass uh, luchadores of Mexico. Um, the the um, the 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 graphics of it. But um, actual Don't Forsake Me is just one of those songs that you have to dance to. The beat is retro enough, but current enough that you have to play it because it mixes well with everything. Mm -hmm. um, and um, there's nothing wrong with this song at all. Anybody, and if anybody says there's something wrong with the song, they're, they're actually mistaken. Actually. <laughs> Good song. Great song. Yeah. Who do you have for number three, Tim? Uh, for number three, I'm going with Broken by Rigo. Nice. Yeah. Love Very, that song. It's, um, it's funny, right? Like, a few years ago, I said that Rigo wasn't ready, right? And then he, he came and kicked the door down. He's like, I'm ready now, you know? <laughs> and so now he, he's absolutely ready. Three songs deep in 2021. So this could be the year of Rego. Yeah, I believe so, too. And Kit Cliff and I were uh, hanging out with him in Florida. If he would only come out of his shell a little bit, I think he'd really be something. No, what a great, what a, right? He's a he's such a nice guy too. Real cool. Uh, who do you have for your number three spot, Cliff? Um. So as to talk about the year of the dubs, and of course this song, I'm going to give it away when I say this had its own controversy, but here and now, um, shy. Uh, yes. I mean. TST did an incredible job. The mm -hmm. writing on the song was incredible. The talent that you had singing on this record was, and you know, um, yeah, that that's happened. my number three. Yeah. yeah. So you know, um, <laughs> there, there has there has been a pattern in the last three or four years where there's an issue with the artist and the label, and then for some reason the song is eliminated from digital media and that's not a disservice to the artist that's not a disservice to the label it's a disservice to the fan and so in these in these quarrels the people that are forgotten first are the ones that you should think of first because they're the ones who purchase your music and that is the fan and so you know we got to do better 
in the future. We got to make sure that all the contracts are, are signed. We got to make sure that no matter what happens, um, you know, we're going to be impartial because we want to make sure that we keep the audience that we earn. Right. And sometimes when we betray our audience like that, they won't buy anything from us again. So if, if you put something out and then you remove it, you know, I, I saw the premiere on Tim Spinning Show Show. I thought it was going to be like the song of 2021. And um, it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> so sad. It makes me yeah. so sad. Yeah. Grand opening, grand closing. You like? Yeah, it. <laughs> so, I mean, like, I mean, just the sapphire background vocals alone, and then Tony Ryan mm. comes in and fucking and, and crushes it. Mm. You know, it's so it was such, such a great, it's still such a great song. That's why I'm just gonna spill the beans. It's my number two. So, nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And and oh. nobody can get it. So does it make um, us playing it more uh, make us more valuable? Perhaps. Mm. You know, because they can't hear it anywhere nice. else. Okay, I'll take it. So, so for me, so for me, when it comes to promoting the song, I had a dilemma, right? So th there was a request for me to remove the song. I don't take those requests very lightly. I don't like people telling me, please play this. And then 10 minutes later, I'm going to take it back. You can't do that, um, especially when you send it through electronic uh, email. So, you know, there's, there's no there's no if, ands, or buts. You wanted me to play the song. You had a falling out, and then you want to take it back. You can't do that. So my dilemma was what I stated before, the fact that there were people that paid $10. I don't know how many. Uh, I know that one complained on my timeline and I was able to get them a, you know, a free CD or download or, or a package from the label, which is great because the label did right by the audience. Um, but, but to me is how do you continue promoting something that somebody can't get? Um, and that's, that's my dilemma. So unfortunately we stopped the promotion of it. Um, of course, Cliff Potts can put it in the mix, um, but the the song itself. Um, it's funny, though, because that one week that it was out, it still allowed it to garner that popularity where it still ended up in the top 40 of 2021. I won't mm -hmm. tell you what spot, but it landed somewhere in there, you know, or just, which is cool. But again, if, if you have something like Shomer putting it on the top of their list and you have someone like the Vinyl Assassin, putting it on top of his list, it means something. Because it's know? worth it. Love's yeah. worth it. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I, I wish that, you know, after the falling out for the song, and we're going to move on really quick, that the company would have just said here to the audience, you know, yeah, they gave it to something them. and just give it to them mm. uh, because they already promised it. So even though the bridges were burned between the artist and the label, you could still have the, the audience who you're catering to, or you're supposed to have it for free. You know, no matter what, because Tony Moran and Sapphire <laughs> came over. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, Cheryl Rodriguez, Duchess, what do you have? N number three, George Lamont's uh, Fly Groove featuring George Lamont's I Believe in Love. Perfect. I, I, he, does the thing, he does this thing with the microphone. He tries to hit the microphone on top of it. I'm like, what's going on with George? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, You'd expect something really good from him, but I, I can't even say just because he's George Lamont, like he's in my number three. Like the song just blew me away. I absolutely love it. Start to finish. Like I drove everyone in the house crazy. I'm still listening to it. It's it's like in my top five that I like we play all the time. And um I, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. it. It's um people ask me how do songs make it to CPR's top 10 countdown, right? So George Lamont's song debuted at number one and stayed there for seven weeks, you know, and that's because that's because number one on iTunes played on Sirius XM played on every mix show. I mean, everybody stopped what they were doing yeah. just to play the song. Yeah. And right? you know, let's just talk about this song for a second too. And I know it's a Paul Cole remix, but I, I really believe uh, this, the song is the star in this song. Uh, you know, George Lamont, put George Lamont on top of it. I mean, that's just, you know, frosting on the cake. Right. But the song is the star, really. Um, when George played, I'm mean, just going to name drop, George was here in the studio and he played, you know, uh, and by studio, I mean my basement. And uh, he played it for me and I go, wow, that's a great song. But from you, I, I wish there was more George Lamont in it for mm -hmm. a George Lamont song. But, and then after I said that, I instantly thought, well, it, 
no matter what George sings, it's going to be a smash. So right. I think, you know, kudos goes to, uh, you know, Joey Garner and the producer yeah. and, and just the way he, he fashioned it. I think it's a smash record. Uh, yeah, and, and sometimes yeah. and sometimes it's the unexpected that takes over, you know. Yeah. So for seven weeks, the song took over. It still has legs, you know. Absolutely. Um, and, and it's still something that we're going to play. And it's something that's going to end up on 2021 countdown and 2022 countdown. Um, yeah. Will it be number one for 2021? It can't because right. it's still we're still playing it and we right. still have legs. We're not gonna we're not gonna say, oh, it's January first, twenty twenty two. The song is too old now. We can't play it. The it's song, a real yeah. It's a real record. It's a real song. It's, it's a real 60 song. Sixty days yeah. in, we got to yeah. give it more time. Yeah, you know. Um, just so people know that are watching this, it takes at least six months for the for the audience to get attached to your your record. Yeah, because it's not like Shomer's going you know, every day on social media to play it. And our show is on Thursday and Friday. So we need six months, you know, six weekends to 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 play the song for people to get used to it. Um, and we got to give Pots uh, the opportunity to mix it in. Uh, the 10 minute mix, the 30 minute mix, you know, the, the Peloton mix. <laughs> uh, yeah, so by the way, Peloton killed Mr. Big, yeah. resurrected him, and then they got rid of him. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Any publicity is good publicity. <laughs> yeah. So we're we're down to the nitty gritty. We're down to our top two. Uh, Cheryl Rodriguez, ladies first. We'll let you do your number two. Who do you have? Marilyn Torres in exchange for what? Wow, nicely number played, two. Cheryl. Um, I think the old school version of that is amazing, and her vocals are amazing, and the. <laughs> And and what I love about the song is the plight, the plight. You can hear it. It, it yeah. comes. It comes with the diaphragm. Yeah. You know what I mean, like. Yeah, and and it has like that that total um, old school vibe, but yet you know you're listening to new school. And her the vocals, like if they had like a thing where you would do pick um, breakout female freestyle artists, like she would be the winner hands down for me, like. She nailed the song, and and then she just came out with "Torn," which, in my opinion, it doesn't equal um, in exchange for what, mm -hmm. but it's a fabulous song, and it's it's really good and well done, and she sings beautiful. I just I'm a big fan of hers. I like her. She's she my number also, two. She also has her own style. It is yeah. Like, right. It's not. And she's not right. copying anyone. You right. know, they're like, this is the way a freestyle song is supposed to be. She's like, no. We're right. Do it this right. Way. Yeah, yeah. She just she just hit, nailed it. Hit it right out of the park for me. I, I loved it. It'd be like uh, a torn. We're gonna put piano, all right. And and if she wants, she'll put cowbell in it too. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's a lot because that song came back a long time ago. You know? Yeah. Twenty twenty. Um. From uh, I believe uh, uh, November of twenty twenty. We've been playing that song straight. It was the longest song. On rotation on CPR's freestyle countdown in 2021. Right. So, so it's it's a uh, it's a song that people really loved. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, Potts. Um, who was your number two? So this song was going to be somewhere in my top five, and what really sealed it in this position, and I'm going to kind of give it away, was when Tim and I were in Miami, and he starts <laughs> off yeah. his set with "I Believe in Love." And the fans are singing it. Yeah, I, I mean it's crazy when p people are there, and you know, you know they're going to know their classics. But when they start their set with their new track, and the fans yeah. in the front are singing with it, it's a hit. I believe in love. You know, Fly Groove featuring George Lamont. It's my number yeah, two. Um, when when that song was first released, my inbox was full of negative feedback, right? Because you know how freestyle is, right? About about three days later. All the negative feedback oh, out boy. the window. Yeah, out the window. Uh, and and again for seven weeks it was just George Lamont every week all week. And then they're like, oh, we're gonna give you extended mixes in a week. You know, another release. And not only did it make it to number one on iTunes, but when they released the EP, it was it was number two, number three. You know, so fantastic record. Like like Cliff said too. He started off. He walked out. He just sang the song, and it was accepted right away. Those girls in the front were, you know, they all had the George Mont t-shirts on and they knew every single word and <laughs> they knew every word to every song that he sang. Right. And, uh, you know, George can't do any wrong. 
you know. So, so now you got to choose. Who do you what do you like better, the freestyle version of "Don't Stop Believing," or do you like the freestyle version of "I Believe in Love"? And you're sitting there, you're like, I don't know what to choose, you know. But you know that that'll be a debate for a future episode. Yeah. Uh, since Phoenix Schomer, who do you have for number two? Oh, for number two, uh, I said uh, uh, here and now, Kenny Sparrow, Tony Moran, Sapphire Shy. Yeah. What about you, Cheryl? Who did you have? Uh, Marilyn Torres. Right, so it's my turn then. <laughs> I knew that. Uh, for me, um, there's a song that just captivated me from the beginning when I heard it, and that's uh, Ray Goes Broken. Yeah. Um, it's just, um, I liked uh, We Were Meant to Be, but I love Broken. Mm -hmm. um, and then Broken uh, came out second after We Were Meant to Be because they, they wanted to push Broken first, but then the label wanted to push. We were meant to be first, so we had to wait for Broken. Uh, but Broken is Broken is amazing, um, and the video is not half bad either. But um, I love the words to the song, and you could hear again the plight. Yeah, yeah he, he just doesn't uh, believe in love anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I love so, it. So uh, congratulations to Rego. I think that um, you know he did a great job in twenty twenty one. Uh, a guy yes. who had a guy who didn't have all the doors open two or three years ago, he just knocked the doors down yeah. with his foot. You know what I mean? No, um, it seems like every quarter he had something. Yeah, there was a yeah. new song, every and that's months. great. And now he has a Portuguese song coming out. Oh, cool! All right, so <laughs> time, <laughs> cool. Time for the nitty gritty. All right. I think you guys know what my number one spot is, so I'll say it for last. See how excited people are? Uh, Griff Potts, who do you have for your number one spot? There we go. Tim, stand up. <laughs> Time from Niagara. Hey, all right. <laughs> wow. All right, so. I mean, it was, you know, um, you said it earlier. Jay Allums did a, a great job on the song. Niasia sounds great. Um, Willie came in with a, a dub that was incredible. And then top it off with the reworks. Uh, Tim did a great job. Um, and that's the yeah. version I play, you know, along with uh, Paradise and his minute of edits. I mean, it, it just built on what was already there. Um, yeah. And I mean, the song is incredible. Uh, so awesome. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give it away. My number one spot goes to Niaja time. Um, and everybody knows that I've been obsessed with this song. <laughs> and and Niaja herself asked me, why do you like this song so much? And all I could tell her was, it's the most complete song of 2021. Vocals, check. Production, check. Writing, check. Mixes, check. You give me a box, it's checked. Um, and, and the way that she sounds, she sounds amazing. Yeah. It's it's um it's the best that Niaja has ever sounded. And if you have seen her in our previous episodes, she will tell you that that song was not meant to be recorded because it was a spur of the moment thing. And just like Fly, Fly Groove featuring George uh, Lamond, I Believe in Love, Niaja is the same way. It's just a song that wasn't meant to be, that was recorded while Jenny Renee was in, in a session and Jenny Renee stepped aside to allow some time for Niaja to record because Jay Adams was there. And and everybody contributed to the release of the song. And to me, it's just the best song of 2021. That's awesome. Hands down. Hands down. And, you know, at the beginning of the year, I was like, uh, you know, Nelson Rago broke is my favorite. And then Niaja time came and I'm like, okay, she won. You know what I mean? And then the video, you know, she has um, this dark, ominous mm -hmm. video. Yeah. She got this Ozzy Osbourne thing, but in freestyle. Yeah. So to me, I'm like, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yep, she rocks. Yeah, she's great. Tim Spinning Show was in the mix. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll be the mark for, for Tim Spinning Show. Who do you have for number one? For number one, uh, we talked about it. Uh, George Lamond, uh, Fly Groove featuring George Lamond, uh, I Believe in Love. Absolutely great. We stand together like the trees. BFO. Boom. Yeah, there you go. 
So, <laughs> so uh, we have the Duchess Cheryl Rodriguez. She's so excited about her number one. <laughs> I'm just obsessed, completely obsessed. Or Niasia, time. There we go. Wow. Yep. Three for four. Wow. And can I tell you why? Like, if uh, from a different perspective, right? So I have always been one of my favorite songs. Always was now and forever specifically the ballad version because there's just something about her the acapella and and that ballad version mm -hmm. that like got me every time i heard it i would like just sob forever and and just one of my favorites when she came out with time within like the third time of hearing it surpassed 20 years of loving a song and like right to like the, the number one spot in my brain ridiculously and i'm gonna go as far as to say i think before freestyle my first love was uh 80s rock rock and roll i mm -hmm. love my old school rock and roll me too and, you know that don henley boys of summer song there's a hint of that sound that tone in this naisha time and and i don't know if that's what made me just like get hooked on it so bad because it reminds me of that 80s vibe that 80s old school sound and then she just killed it new school style and mm -hmm. the vocals the production <laughs> specifically i love the um Willie Valentine dub edit mix. Insane. Yeah, I, I did a meme for that one, and I, I thought it was really funny where the guy comes out of the car, starts dancing to it. Oh yeah. But the, the the part where Naisha goes, "You and I," mm. um, and then the way that that tone just goes up in the song, yeah. um, and the way that it blends with the mix and the words, and it's just amazing. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if you're getting where where I'm coming from, but. She got. She goes. I don't want to. I don't want to do the song an injustice. Come on, I do it. it. But <laughs> it's, just, it's just. It's just. It's uh, just melodic. To you know, like there. There are songs that capture you. Yeah. And capture your ears. And and that song does it for me. Yeah. Um. And I can't say enough great things about it. My number one pick, uh, Cheryl Rodriguez and Cliff Potts. I think that Asia owes a check to CPR's Clubhouse crew. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, listen, guys, I, I've had a lot of fun doing this. I thank you so much for arranging your schedules to to do this. And, you know, we were scheduled to do this today on an earlier note. And uh, got a flat tire coming here. I was so <laughs> mad. I thought we were going to be able to rec record this. But I was able to, uh, you know, push it back an hour. And thank you guys for being so gracious. Um, Tim. Yes, sir. Can you please tell everyone where they could find you and your merchandise? <laughs> uh, Timspinner.com. There we go. <laughs> Timspinner.com. That's it. Timspinner.com. I've got CDs. I've got interviews up there. We got stretch pants for you, Jose. Uh, we nice. got uh, yeah, everything. T-shirts and uh, <laughs> you say stretch mixes. pants or stretch pants? Stretch pants. Stretch oh, pants. Stretch pants. We got the workout, all right. workout <clears throat> pants. Yeah. Like yeah, whatever you need. Yeah. Uh, hoodies, we get them all. Timspinner.com. I'm on Facebook on Thursday and uh, and su uh, Sunday. I start here Chicago time, seven o'clock, uh, both nights, and uh, that's that's how I roll. All right, well then, I want to thank you so much for joining us. You know, thanks for always being so nice, man. I appreciate you. Hey, man, listen, I I, I could I could sit here and talk about why I'm a ten spinning showmer fan, but then I'm gonna make you blush. I got time. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, no, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Stop, stop, stop. You will make me blush. All right, Tim. Thank you so much for joining. I got a chance us. to hang out with Cliff in Flo in Florida. It was the I, I I don't know about you, Cliff, but I had a great time meeting you, man. Thank you for being so. Yeah, good. no, I was just gonna say, um, it, it was an awesome time, um, and I had a blast. Um, as I said, you know, um, as we were leaving the event. I said, you know, a couple of years from now, Tim and I are going to say, hey, remember that one time out in the parking lot <laughs> under the tent? Oh, yeah, rain. We were waiting for the car. Well, I tell you what, guys, I, I took that picture and I framed it. So oh. at, at my desk, <laughs> at my desk, I had a picture of my girlfriend and my stepdaughter. I took that out. And I took a picture <laughs> of Cliff Potts and Shomer. I get it. You know, I get it. I, I get it. Love I it. So we laughed, I we think, tried, and I think Tim life. and I are still going to have to bring Jose a couple of uh, a cup of that Devil's Brew. Oh yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we want you to like us. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, Tim, thank you so much for joining CBR's Clubhouse Live. Merry we'll Christmas, to Tim. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you. Yeah. Merry Christmas, Tim, to you and the family. Thank you, man. Bye. <laughs> that was the goat, Tim Spinning Shomer. I got the CPR's Clubhouse crew here. Uh, guys, thank you so much for another year.
um, you know, people don't understand um, that you guys pick your own music. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Is Cheryl still allowed? <laughs> yeah, they don't understand, like. Who? The Duchess like, who? <laughs> like, Cheryl Rodriguez has to do two and a half hours every week of brand new uh, programming. Uh, Cliff Potts has to do 40 <laughs> minutes of new mixes every week on top of what I what I do of uh, putting it together and um, also um, you know doing the countdown but I want to encourage everyone to to join us at cprsmusic.com for links to the podcast but also to join us on uh, Friday mornings at 9 a.m uh, Pacific time right and that is um, uh, the the radio, that, the radio station that has has taken us in um when other radio stations took advantage of what we had to offer hot 97.7 our new home in california san jose i want to thank them for being for being great partners mm -hmm. and we're we're on noon time eastern standard time or 9 a.m uh their time pacific time um and i want to thank them for um picking up cpr's clubhouse crew um you can also check us out on friday nights uh, 8 p.m. to 12 midnight. Uh, Show Rodriguez and I on 90.7 FM WTCC. That's our second night because our first night is also Thursdays from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can also check out many, many uh, mixes and replays of mixes from Cliff Potts as well. Um, and on Sundays, CPR's Clubhouse Crew, New York on Party 1019 on iHeartRadio. Uh, we're there for two hours, 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the CPR's Clubhouse crew. And, again, uh, I thank you guys because, you know, I, I, I can try to do things on my own. I'd rather not. But to have two partners like you guys that do this because you are as passionate for this music as I am, um, I just want to tell you guys I appreciate you very much. Um, and I, I want to make sure that people know that Cheryl does pick her own music. <laughs> Thank and so does Cliff. <laughs> the freedom, the freedom that Cliff has had, um, I hope that he he understands that is the respect that I have for him. That I know that no matter what, the mix is going to be great, and mm -hmm. the fact that he can choose his own music. Um, sometimes he premieres music that I don't even have. I'm like, what is that song you play? <laughs> so, and, and and sometimes, um, you know, he um he just does these these edits on there, you know, um. Alexis87 is the person that does some of the edits. Yeah. Uh, so shout outs go out to him and thank you. Uh, but again, it's another great year of having a great crew like you guys, and I want to thank you. You guys have anything to say before we go? Uh, I mean, uh, go ahead, Cheryl. You first. No, please. No, go, 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 go. All right. Please, I insist. I mean, uh, you know, it, it's great to be part of, you know, this team because it's all about promoting the quality, right? If it wasn't, I couldn't sign my name to it. So uh, it, it's great to be part of it. Um, it. It was, you know, it started out for freestyle a rough year. Um, and hopefully what we've seen in the last five, six months continues into 2022 because right. um, it needs it. Um, but, sure uh, you know, thanks for having me as part of your show. I, I enjoy doing the mixes, um, you know, I enjoy fitting in and uh, it, it works out well. Yeah. Thank you, Cliff. Cheryl? Yes, it's, it's an absolute honor to work with both of you. And I think one of the reasons why we, we do work so much is where there's a friendship going on there, right? So there's so much respect. Like you say, when you let him pick, I get to pick my own music, you know? Um, that's that. That's that's a sense of um, security that you know you trust in the person, and and it goes all three ways. And I think that's why we enjoy each other so much and want to continue to you know, work hard and, and make it. Why are you laughing at me? What are you laughing at? I'm laughing at you. I, I'm just, I'm, I, it makes me happy of hearing you say that. <laughs> but also, also the fact that, also the fact that Tim Spinning Schomer comes on this show as well. Um, the goat is what I call him. The boom goat. <laughs> and he comes on here and he takes time out of his schedule to yeah. be part of the show because, you know, he trusts that what we're doing is promoting good quality freestyle content. Um, and there's a mutual respect between everyone that was part of this uh, recording today. So I want to thank you guys. Um, so for the CPR Clubhouse crew, my name is CPR Jose Ortiz. That is the Vinyl Assassin, DJ Cliff Potts. And that is the Duchess, Cheryl Rodriguez. We'll talk to you soon from CPR Clubhouse. Merry Christmas.